On next to this. Hey, remember that 1995 Mortal Kombat movie starring that girl from Billy Madison and Christopher Lambert as the Asian God of Thunder? Yeah, that was a cheesy but fun flick featuring tons of fighting, a fantastic techno music soundtrack, the most basic of storylines, and enough humor to make you forget that it was based on a video game whose only point was to show enough violence so as to get kids to keep pumping quarters into it instead of the superior Street Fighter 2, which sat right next door to it in the arcade. And hey, remember Mortal Kombat Annihilation? The sequel movie, which recast almost everybody from the first flick, puked all over the earned goodwill of the original, paid that kid next door with an Amiga 600 to make the really awful special effects and pretty much shat the bed with its horrible storytelling and acting? Guess which one the writers and director of the 2021 Mortal Kombat film watched in preparation for their movie. 2021's Mortal Kombat goes a little something like this. In some forest in 17th century Japan, some Chinese ninja oh, oh, think about it. kills this Japanese clan master and his family with his Iceman mutant freezing powers. Then around 400 years later in America, some guy named Cole Young he isn't even in any of the 11 plus Mortal Kombat video games gets his pathetic ass hand to him in a really lame MMA fight. Colvin gets sucked into the interdimensional tournament that controls the freedom of Earth from the evil dickheads of the Outworld, known as with a K, because he was born with a kick-ass dragon scar on his body. I mean, I was born with a birthmark that looks like Raquel Welch. Does that allude to what I think it alludes to? In Hoodles, the assassin who killed the Japanese ninja in the opening of the flick shows up, tries to kill Cole, and freezes the fucking arms off of some ex-military beefcake known as Jax. Cole runs away like a pussy and meets up with Jax's old army buddy, Sonya Blade, and her prisoner who she has chained up in her trailer home for apparently weeks on end already, who supernaturally hasn't pissed or shit himself yet. Some Australian asshole who talks like Deadpool known as Kato, I mean Kano, and we learn in some terribly forced exposition that Cole is a Mortal Kombat fighter, that they need to get to some super secret training base in order to level up their fighting powers, and that the Outworld douchebags who, if they win this, the 10th Mortal Kombat tournament in a row, they win the Earth and can suck the souls out of all the humans that they want to until their bellies are full. Just like John Candy with the old 96er in the Great Outdoors. Cole and the gang, of course, find the sacred training ground almost immediately because Kano heard from his best friend's girl that her cousin's massage therapist once worked on some guy who knew where it was located, in the middle of an unnamed desert. They meet some new friends who actually are from the video games, learn some stupid superpowers when they get angry, like the superpower of throwing a hat and growing cyborg arms, have Kano unsurprisingly turn against them, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal, fight Shang Tsung's ugly motherfucking warriors from the outworld, and then watches the damn soul of the 1600s Japanese clan master resurrects himself from out of fucking nowhere in order to kill the ice ninja who killed him and most of his fan back in the day. Oh yeah, and Cole's that Japanese guy's great to the 20th power grandson, because why the fuck not? Then Cole goes to Hollywood to find Johnny Knoxville, I, I mean Johnny Cage in order to get him to fight in the Mortal Kombat sequel. I mean the tournament, which is still about a month away. The end. So here's my question for you. How, after seeing what happened with the 90s Mortal Kombat movies, did the writers and director of this god-awful movie learn the wrong fucking lesson? It was as if you watched two friends live their lives. Friend A finds a great girl who loves him and supports him and they have a great family together. And friend B hooks up with a meth head who physically assaults him and puts her cigarettes out on him every night. And after that now crackhead friend murders this bitchy and abusive wife, you pick up his crack pipe, light it up for yourself and say, meh, his crack just wasn't pure enough. I'm sure my life will turn out just as good as friend day if I use a higher purity of meth. The people behind Mortal Kombat 2021 should have been like, oh, people like it when the plot to a fighting video game movie jumps straight into the tournament hand-to-hand -hand battles, gives us fun and entertaining characters who we learn to care for, and doesn't take itself too seriously. Like the first MK movie, we should not make the plot overly complicated, filled with stupid and ludicrous twists, delay any actual combat to the very end, and use too many cuts and jumps during the actual fights to make it look like an ADHD middle schooler filmed it. Lesson learned. But instead, they watched both 90s movies, got stoned, ate some mushrooms, drank a bottle of vodka each, shat their pants, and said, wait, so like, we should make this like a mix of that Street Fighter movie that had Gomez Adams in it and the second Mortal Kombat movie. Oh man, that'd be awesome. And we shouldn't put any real fun fighting in it till at least an hour and a half into it. And like, whoa, what if our universe is like only a single atom in like butt hair of another creature in a larger universe, man? <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2021 is boring, not fun, filled with awful characters played by awful actors, and prominently featuring some of the most lame and ill-filmed fights ever put to screen. It's a movie based on a fighting video game with fight scenes less interesting than the fisticuff shot between Happy Gilmore and Bob Barker. The special effects were okay only 50% of the time, mostly Sub-Zero's ice effects, with them being laughably bad the other 50% of the time. I couldn't take any of the overly dramatic scripts seriously as everyone was acting like they were just reading the back 
back of a cereal box throughout the entire movie. Well, except for Kano and his rival Cabal, K-Ball, uh, who were both ridiculously hammy every time they were on screen. And not in a bad way per se, but in a very Deadpool-y and wannabe way. I mean, they, they did make me laugh a lot. Mortal Kombat universe rules are set up, broken, then broken again for no reason, not even to drive the plot forward. For example, all the Earth Warriors are being hunted down by the Dillweed Outworld assholes, even though it's against the contest to fight before the actual tournament. Raiden is a god who upholds these rules, but he doesn't do anything but put up a shield to stop the Outworld gang from killing the Earthers inside the special training base and only there. Then the shield is broken and the Outworlders attack and kill an Earth Defender and the all-watching Raiden does jack shit to interfere. But then he decides to send the remaining Earthers to assassinate the rest of the Outworld clan, despite this being blatantly against the rules that he and his other gods set up and supposedly enforce. Then the 1600s Japanese guy just appears from out of hell to kill his ancient rival. What the hell is going on here? Other than the dumb story, poorly written characters, and bad acting and pathetic fighting, the movie feels empty as hell. Despite being a decently budgeted movie, I can't think of a scene that had more than five or six people in it at once. The world felt so empty and therefore like there wasn't worth much to defend. It's like if the earth is this unpopulated, fuck it, let Shang Tsung take it over. What does it matter? It feels like there are no stakes at all here. It's sad to me that a 26 year old movie with a Muppet final boss outdid its predecessor in pretty much every fucking possible way, especially in the soundtrack department. I mean, Jesus, the original 95 movie soundtrack list is the perfect gym album for getting you all pumped the fuck up. And how did the guy who died in 17th century Japan and who only spoke Japanese the entire movie know the English for Get over here in his final big scene? Watch it or not, I don't care. I'm done with Mortal Kombat. Both the movies and the shitty games where you have to press forward, forward, backward, high kick, block, down, block, up, up, forward, low punch, block, forward in order to throw an uppercut. I'm gonna play me some Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the rest of the night.